What has fascinated science is why these reptiles were so much more active than other animals. Because they're cold-blooded, heat would certainly help. But perhaps oxygen had a part to play as well. This topic has fascinated Dr. Mark Norell of the American Museum of Natural History. He began to compare some of the specific characteristics of dinosaurs from their fossils. Some of them, it seems, share organs very similar to those of modern birds. This is the neck vertebra of an Andean condor. And it's a very, very complex structure. Basically, this is the front of the vertebra right here. This is the, what's called the neural spine. This hole that goes right through here is where the spinal cord would have gone through. But if you look very carefully, you'll see that there's almost a sponge-like tissue of little pockets and holes throughout the entire body of the vertebra itself. And this is where the air sacs permeated the bone itself. Now this can be compared almost exactly with this Allosaurus right here. We have the same thing. We have the tall neural spine up on the top. We have the cavity, which is here filled by rock, where the spinal cord went through. And we have some of these pneumatic cavities, or these air spaces, which are found in the same position as that of the Andean condor. Birds are probably descended from dinosaurs. And today, only birds have an air sac system for breathing, a very specialized evolution of the respiratory system. In an ordinary breathing system, the lungs are alternately filled with oxygen and carbon dioxide. This happens because the same pathway is used for inhaling and exhaling air. Oxygen in, then carbon dioxide out. It's the way we breathe. In an air sac system, two different pathways are used for inhaling and exhaling. This is achieved by making use of special bags called air sacs, which are part of the modified lung system. With this method of breathing, the lungs are always filled with fresh oxygen. Migratory birds can fly at altitudes in excess of 30,000 feet, where oxygen levels are so low that without the air sac system of breathing, they would simply not have the energy. The system is thought to be at least three times as efficient as our normal lungs. Perhaps dinosaurs also evolved this same way of breathing to cope with low oxygen levels after the mass extinction. Dr. Peter Ward of the University of Washington has been researching why dinosaurs were able to remain the dominant species for as long as they did. At an annual meeting of the Geological Society of America held in the fall of 2003, he submitted his radical theory. Last and hopefully not least, I'd like to talk a bit about... This the linked the possibility that dinosaurs were able to survive long periods of low oxygen levels because they might have had an air sac system. Is correct or anything is correct, let's give them credit. And if it's really you start throwing things at me, they don't know me and they had nothing to do with it. Dr. Ward pointed to the latest data that showed that the low oxygen environment immediately following the mass extinction event actually persisted as long as a hundred million years. Defining biodiversity. We've long thought about CO2 volumes through time, but the other aspect here is oxygen through time, and this is from Bob's most recent geocarb modeling. And once again, Bob and his colleagues have concentrated on this interval of time from just before, say, 250 million years ago to up into the Jurassic. There's about a 100 million year interval if Berner and his group is correct, when oxygen was lower than today, and their studies suggest far lower than today, and I'd like to think very briefly at the end here about those implications. And think about the nature of the air sac lung system. Birds have it, and the dinosaur workers have now increasingly begun, begun to think that at least the Sauriscians had an air sac system that is equivalent to that of birds. Having this system, even if oxygen were not changing, is gonna be an enormously efficient thing to do. 
So let's look finally at survivability across this, and I would contend that it was enhanced by those clades with bone pneumaticity. So the Eric Sachs system, while not as advanced as modern birds, I think would have aided in an oxygen poor world. Thank you. Dr. Ward's a world leader in the research of mass extinction events, and this presentation was the first time his theory was presented to the public. I remember a dinosaur expert scratching his head in public and also writing in print saying, I can't understand. These man -like reptiles have such better teeth. And yet these really primitive toothed dinosaurs survive and flourish. You should think that these would be the winners and these the losers, and it's just the opposite. Well, it's just the opposite. Probably isn't so much from the feeding as it is from the respiration. During the age of the dinosaurs, the mammals remained small and secretive. They did not adapt to the low level of oxygen as perhaps the dinosaurs did. Yet, it was the mammals who survived. We have two mass extinctions. The first one kills off 90% of everything. The second one kills off less. And the reason it kills off less is that there are creatures which are now adapted to deal with this crisis. They are ready for it and they skate right through it and advance. The oxygen, low levels of oxygen continue right into the Jurassic. Mammals which survive are having a very hard time. Being a mammal is tough enough. Tasting great is even tougher. But being a mammal with a very bad lung system, and you're not very good, the best you can do is small or hide, and at long periods of time, you're probably not capable of a lot of rapid movement. And instead, you have all these super skaters around you, these motor scooter dinosaurs, which are extracting oxygen more efficiently. They can last longer than you can. They can run faster than you can. They're as intelligent as you are. They do better. Dinosaurs in that world are just better. Dr. Smith of the South African Museum thinks that our distant ancestors also took an evolutionary step by improving their own breathing system. He was researching Thrinaxodon, one of the cynodont group of mammal-like reptiles which did survive. He thinks that there is evidence that it was beginning to adapt to environments with low oxygen levels. In its ancestral form, the rib cage covered the entire trunk. Now the rib cage covered only its chest. It shows a very distinctive change in rib morphology about midway down the, down the trunk, about this level here. And in fact, it's very similar to the change in rib morphology that humans have. Um, and it's, uh, it's postulated that this could have been um, caused or, or, or could have supported the, a diaphragm. And uh, a diaphragm, of course, increases the efficiency of of inhalation and exhalation of air into the lung. When the diaphragm goes down, more oxygen can be taken in. When it rises, it helps to exhale a greater amount of air from the lungs. This was perhaps an adaptation to low oxygen levels, but not as efficient as the dinosaurs. Strangely, this adaptation of the ribcage was to give mammals a huge advantage millions of years later.
Most mammals can twist their trunks so that their abdomen can face sideways, an advantage if you feed your young with breast milk. With the rib cage extending all the way to the trunk, as with reptiles, this posture is almost impossible. Even though mammals were unable to cope well with low oxygen content, the evolutionary advantage of their lung system proved to be a survival factor. Fossilized for all time, a mother and offspring lie side by side. This was found in South Africa. Immediately following the mass extinction, mammals began a different lifestyle. They cared and nurtured their young, fed them with breast milk. Scientists think that the low oxygen levels continued for a further 100 million years. And this played its part in the evolution of true mammals. This fossil is the oldest known of a mammal which had a placenta. It was recently unearthed in China. It was found in strata dating back to 125 million years ago, at the time when dinosaurs were at their peak. This could be the ancestor from which all placental mammals, including humans, have evolved. Dr. Ji Kiang was part of the team that announced the discovery. Uh, 所以我相信，在这种情况下，胎生有卵生变为胎生，与当时的低氧环境是密切相关的。With mammals like us, the mother and her child came to be linked by the placenta. Her blood flows through the umbilical cord to the developing fetus. Red blood cells laden with oxygen are fed to her infant, supporting the growth and development inside her womb. Perhaps instigated by low oxygen levels, this relationship between mother and young was a new evolutionary step and is unique to the mammals of the miracle planet. <laughs>